Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video I'm going to show you how I study books of the Bible. So in my Bible reviews for Bible Review Blog, I have mentioned several times that I recently did a year-long study through the four Gospels where I spent about three months in each book. And several people left comments and sent me messages saying, hey, I'd love to know more about that, what your process is, how you go about that. And so that's what this video is. I've put it together in three simple steps that kind of show you how I go about doing that deep dive into a book of the Bible. Now, I just want to say, I am not against a, a read the Bible in a year plan where you're trying to read the entire Bible, sometimes reading the entire Bible more than once in a year. I'm all for that. I, I'm not against uh, studying certain themes or topics in the Bible. All for it. I just like to study entire books of the Bible at a time, and that's what I kind of focus on for the most part. So this is a process that I've developed to really dig deep and to try to make it as meaningful as possible. So if you have any questions as I go through this, leave a comment below. I will answer those as best I can and try to help you out. And I will anything I mention in this video, I'll leave in the description so you can kind of see more about that and explore it on your own. So anyway, this is the three-step process I go through when I study books of the Bible. Okay, the first step I'm calling big picture. And that's because that's exactly what it's about. It's, it's about getting a big picture view of this entire book of the Bible learning what it's about, the who, the what, the when, the where, the how. And what I like to do always is to start with the text. I find one of my favorite Bibles and I sit down and I read through the entire book in one sitting. Now, that's a lot. For one of the Gospels, that's going to take two or three hours. But I like to carve out the time to sit down, to absorb it all at the same time because I really want to immerse myself in the big picture view of what this book is all about. Um, another good idea that I like to do is to listen to the entire book in one sitting. There's some apps out there, uh, the, the YouVersion Bible app that I think everybody in the world has on their phone. They have audio versions of Bibles on there. There's a really great app called the Dwell app that reads Scripture to you. And so I'll go for a walk when I'm starting a study and just listen to that book for a couple of hours. And what I'm trying to do is just to, to soak in it, to really get as much of it as I can. I'm not studying anything as I go. I'm just soaking it in getting all of it in there and kind of uh, noting along the way some things that stand out to me. That's the process. Um, I, I also like a, a group called Bible Project. I'm sure you've heard of Bible Project. If you haven't, you should go to BibleProject.com and check them out. One of the things that I love is they do book introductions for every book of the Bible. They're videos that are illustrated, and they kind of unveil each book of the Bible. So you get the whole uh, arc of the entire book, but then you get some of the major themes, some information about who wrote it, things like that. That's really what we're trying to do in the big picture section. It's just kind of get the whole thing in there. One more thing I like to do is include something called a Bible introduction. I've got a couple here. This one's from Dr. Donald Hagner. Um, I really like this one. It's just called The New Testament, A Historical and Theological Introduction. Great book where that's basically going to do a little bit more academic, theological deep dive into each book so that you kind of get all the background and the history. What we're looking for in this, uh, this big picture study time is the historical context of when this book was written, the, the literary shape and feel. These are human writers inspired by God who are putting all this together, and each one of them has some nuances and things, and, and I'm trying to figure all of that out. I'm trying to really immerse myself in that. I've also got N.T. Wright and Michael Bird's The New Testament in Its World. This is a newer book that a lot of people are excited about, and these are just, you can say, hey, I want to study the book of Acts, and there's a, a section on Acts that's going to give you a ton of background information, a ton of uh, depth and detail to just kind of get it all set for you, and that's what the big picture section is about. It's just learning the big picture of this book of the Bible, kind of knowing before I dive in what I'm getting myself into and what the big major themes and the purpose and all that stuff is. And so that's what I do when I do the big picture. Okay, part two of my process when I study books of the Bible is called Zoom In. And that's because we're going from the big picture and now we're zooming in and we're really focusing on the text. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the book and I'm going to study either a passage or usually no more than one chapter at a time, depending on uh, how much is going on there and what's happening in this section of the book. So I'm going to march through the book. This is why it obviously takes a while. This, this part two takes the longest time because I'm going to read the Bible slowly. I'm really going to soak it up. So what I do, again, I start with the text. I grab one of my favorite Bibles 
and then I just read. If I'm going to read one passage or one chapter, I read that. And what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm taking a closer look, and I am thinking, what questions do I have about this passage? What do I think this is about? What, what is this saying to me? I'm really thinking about, okay, how do, just me and the text. I'm, I'm doing this prayerfully. I'm asking God to, to reveal things to me, and I'm saying, okay, what does this say to me? This is when I'm going to jot some things down. I'm going to take notes, whether that's in a wide margin Bible or a journaling Bible or in my own journal, which is what I typically do. Just what does this say to me? Where am I at with this text? Because I really want to think about it on, on my own with the text in me. That's where I start when I zoom in. But I don't stop there. Then I want to include some outside voices. I've got a couple of different suggestions here. This is the New Testament for Everyone commentary series by N.T. Wright. Um, I I really love N.T. Wright. I got to study with him at the University of Oxford. And this series is not like so dense that everybody can use it. It, You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be a seminary student, but a lot of wisdom. It's very pastoral, but N.T. Wright is kind of marching through these texts and giving you some more insight and some deeper um, understanding of what's happening here. And then what I like to do is I go over here and I get some of these big boys, the, the more academic commentaries, where this Word Biblical Commentary series is fantastic. So is the New Testament Library. Um, These are commentaries that are going to be really, really dense, and they're going to talk about in the New Testament, they're going to really dig into the Greek, and they're going to parse out some of that stuff, and it's going to, it's going to probably be, for some people, it's just going to be a little bit too dense. And I, I mean, I'll read the text, I'll read and see right, this is what I did for the, the Gospels study, and then I'll come over to one of these, and that's usually going to take me 45 minutes to an hour to study 15 to 20 verses, and, and that's what I like to do. I, I'm kind of a nerd that way when I want to really dig deep. But what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I don't know everything, and there are people out there, biblical scholars, who have spent their lives studying these texts, and they have a lot of wisdom and a lot of insight, and I want to um, include them in my time of studying the Bible so that I can go as deep as I can. And what I often find is when I'm originally studying the text on my own and jotting down ideas, when I have questions, I usually can get them answered when I consult a commentary. And sometimes what happens is what I think the text is about is probably not really what it's about. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going, oh, okay, now I see more clearly what this is saying, what it meant to the people then, and how that applies to my life. And so really what I'm doing when I zoom in is I'm studying it on my own, I'm including outside voices, and I'm really processing more slowly what each section of this book of the Bible means. And that's what I do when I zoom in. The third and final step in my process of studying a book of the Bible is to review and reflect. So I've gone through the entire book now in my zoom in process. I've done that big picture, then I've zoomed in, I've gone through every chapter. So for the Gospel of Matthew, it's 28 chapters of studying the text on my own, writing down notes, then consulting commentaries and kind of figuring it all out. When I'm done with that, when I get to the end of the book, I don't just put them on the shelves and go to the next thing. Now I want to take a few days to review and reflect. I'm a bit of a nerd, and I recognize that I'm admitting this on the internet, but what I do is anything that I have highlighted or underlined in one of those commentaries, I create a separate um, Word document for each book, and I type in anything that I highlighted or underlined. So any of these commentaries that I've read, which I've read all of these, everything in these books that is highlighted or underlined, I have a unique Word document on my computer with all of that in there. I like a couple of things about this. One, it allows me to review everything that I've just studied for the last two or three months about this book of the Bible, the things that the author of the commentary um, highlighted for me that were really illumin like, what's the word? Illuminating? Illuminating for me. I, I, I have that now um, reviewed, but I also have a Word document where when I'm studying this book in the future for a Bible study or a sermon or just talking with a friend, I have something that I can go back to and kind of review some of those notes. That's what I really like. Again, I recognize that that's nerdy. I actually have that for every theological book or thing that I read. I, I do that. So I have all these Word documents that I can kind of go back and use um, to reflect and think about that. I really like that process. And then what that also does is it gives me time to reflect. And what I'm doing at the end of this is I'm not just finishing it, putting them on the shelves, and going to the next thing. I'm saying, okay, Lord, what have I learned by studying this book of the Bible? What have you taught me? What have you challenged me to reconsider? Um, 
I believe that when we study Scripture, that when we read the Bible, that God's Word infuses itself into us and that it should demand something from us, that we should either be willing to see the world with a new lens, to, to change something about the way we are going about our own lives. But when the gospel does that, it, it should come in and change us. It should come in and do something to us. And so this third step is just me to slow down and then to say to the Lord, okay, God, what does my life need to look like in response to your word? What does my life need to look like in, in response? For me, a year with Jesus, man, that was challenging because Jesus said and did some things that are not the verses we talk about all the time, and it really, really challenged me. And so that's what my, my third step is, is to just kind of go back to that 30,000-foot view. Oftentimes, I will read the entire book again after I've studied it, and just so many things will stand out differently to me. I'll go on another walk, and I'll listen to it, and I'm just trying to review everything, to reflect to prayerfully consider what my response is to this study, and then to ask God to bless me as I move forward into whatever my next study is. So that's the third step, to review and reflect. So there you have it. That's my three-step process for how I study books of the Bible. I start by looking at the big picture, and then I zoom in, and then I step back when I'm done to review and reflect. I hope that this has been insightful for you and encouraging to you as you think about your own process for how you're going to study the Bible. Again, please leave me a comment if you have questions about this. I'd love to chat with you more. And definitely look at the description below. Anything that I've mentioned in this video, I've put all that information there so you can keep exploring. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.